trumpets, play the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he comes. Voices? Yes. The spirits talk to me all the time. This is Ruth Baxter, daughter of Tom. How do you do? Howdy. Poor thing, her father killed himself right here in this house. My father did not commit suicide. You know he was murdered. I'm only saying what the coroner said. Oh, we're wasting time talking about it. I'll go get Mr. Putler. Well, here they are. You must be California Carlson. My name's Potter. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Potter, but I am Hopalong Cassidy. This is California. Oh, how do you do? Howdy, Mr. Potter. This is Lucky Jenkins. How do you do? We're friends of California's. I told the two strangers you'd let them stay. However, we are not prepared for them. We can take care of them all, Matilda. Thank you, Mr. Potter. I don't mean to intrude, but you see, I've always sort of looked out for California. That's quite all right, Mr. Cassidy. There's no secrets. After you've cleaned up a bit, we'll have dinner. Then for the formality of the will. Matilda, show the gentleman to the master's bedroom. Yes, Mr. Potter. The master's bedroom. Well, see you later. Right. I'll bring our things. Right. Now, ain't that comfortable and restful? Looks more like a zoo to me. Oh, Mr. Hiram was a great hunter and a good shot. Is that so? Mm. Uh, ain't that a wonderful bed? Oh, it sure is. Uh, is it the bed? Yeah, that... both your cousins died in it. Don't worry. There ain't nothing to be afraid of. I don't think. I hope you'll enjoy your stay with us. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we will, uh, especially Mr. Carlson. Good. Mm-hmm. That's the best meal I ever tasted. Beats the stew and beans you cook. You should try California's cooking sometime. Yes, of course. Can we read the will now? Mm, just like all the rest, aren't you? Can't wait to see what you'll get. If you'll all go in the library, we'll proceed as soon as the others arrive. that repaired. No place of mine would be allowed to get in this condition. Put that on your list. You sure will. Hello, Father. Hello, Phineas. This is another cousin, a beneficiary in the will, Mr. Phineas Phipps. Glad to know all of you, I'm sure. Well, well, let's get on with it, Potter. I'm in a hurry. My time is worth money. Now, just a minute, Phineas. All right, Joshua. Just another one of your nice relatives, California. Oh, you can't blame him too much. You can pick your friends, but not your relatives. <laughs> Well, well, Potter, shall we start? Right away. Phineas, this is your cousin, Ralph Baxter. How do you do? We missed you at dinner, Ralph. I've had more important things on my mind. Come along, Ralph. Follow me. Nice room. Uh, come in. Good-looking fellow. My cousin Hiram? Uh, yes. There was a picture of Tom hanging next to him, but it's broken and Matilda removed it. She took it down because she hated my father. You're mistaken, Ruth. The frame was broken. I uh, saw it myself. Oh, what's a broken picture got to do with this? I'm in a hurry. Yeah, let's get on with the will. Very well. I, Hiram Baxter, being of sound mind and body, and not acting under duress. Oh, Dad, blast it all, Potter. Do we have to sit here and listen to you read pages of that tummy rot? Which we don't understand anyway. This is the legal procedure. However, if it's agreeable to all parties concerned, I can say it in my own words. Why, certainly. Go on. Sure. sure. Actually, this document is very simple. When Tom Baxter, Ruth's father, died, he stipulated that his brother Hiram be appointed executor of the estate. The income from the property was given to seven people. Ruth Baxter, Ralph Baxter, California Carlson, Matilda Hackett, Joshua Coulter, Phineas Phipps, and Hiram. When Hiram died, the estate was to be equally divided among the remaining six people. If one of them dies, his or her share shall be divided among the other five, four, three, two, and so on. I might have known there would be some trick about this. There's no trick, Phineas. Well, suppose we all live a spell longer. Then what do we get? Yes. I'm afraid not much. The herds dwindle to nothing, and we've had several dry seasons. But what about the land? That should be worth something. The land is practically worthless. And on top of that, there's a loan at the bank must be paid off. I see. In other words, there isn't much left for anybody. 
I could manage to raise something for the beneficiaries if they will all agree to sell. Sell? If the land has no value, who's going to buy it? A man I'm acquainted with could use it at his price. Well, if it's worth something to a friend of yours, it certainly should be worth something to these people. That is for them to decide, Mr. Cassidy. Then why don't we find out what they want to do? Matilda, will you sell your share? Why, yes, if you think it's best, Mr. Potter. Oh, sure, sell. There's nothing else to do. I'll sell. And I won't sell. And I won't sell. Maybe something can be done with this place. Mr. Lawyer, I've given this a lot of thought. And I... Won't sell. I won't? Well, that's it. My, uh, advisor. Advisor says we won't sell. So I won't sell. Well, Mr. Potter, everyone has expressed their opinion. And they're showing very poor judgment. Mr. Potter, the place seems to have lost a lot of money. My father had account ledgers. I know he did. If he did, I never saw them, Miss Baxter. And I'll remind you that I'm handling the affairs of this estate as per prescribed in the will. <laughs> What's so amusing, Mr. Cassidy? Oh, I just think about how funny this is. Funny? Well, it's not funny to me. Nobody but a crooked, crazy old skin flint like Hiram could have thought of a will like that. There's nothing unusual about the document? No, except that it might be a great temptation for them to try to kill each other. These six people could be cut down to, we'll say, three, two, or even one. Ralph here accuses me of trying to kill him. Did you? Huh? Oh, of course not. I was just showing him. My gun ain't been fired. No, it hasn't. Is this man a friend of yours? His name is Matt Ogden. He runs a saloon in town. But he'd have no reason to harm anyone here. You said you came here to see Mr. Potter. Yes. From time to time, I had a little odd jobs for him, like uh, serving papers, you know. Mm hmm. Have you any papers for him to serve tonight? No, not tonight. I, uh... I'll talk to you tomorrow about that Higgins matter. Right now, we have more important things to attend to. Sure, sure, Mr. Potter. You coming into town tomorrow, Ralph? Yeah, yeah, I'll be there. You can depend on it. Good. Well, good night. Good night. We better get back to the house. What about Phineas? Can't help him now, Hop. What do you mean? He's dead. <laughs> You shouldn't have moved the body. We didn't move it. He was right here when I went outside. Well, this is incredible, Mr. Cassidy. I don't understand it. I better send Joshua into town to get the that sheriff. That won't do any good now. But don't look so surprised. You can't prove there's been a murder without the corpus delecti. You're right. What is this, say, a corpus business? It means you had to have a dead body to prove someone's been killed. Well, the voice has said this would happen. Stop that insane talk, Matilda. Maybe it's not so insane, Mr. Potter. You remember what I said about the six relatives? Phineas is number one. Oh, my gosh. Give me a high number. Uh. Now what happened? Well, I just sat down on the bed and flop it fell apart. Well, that's something else you can have fixed. Hoppy, let's get out of this place. Looks like I ain't gonna get much out of it anyway. Maybe we ought to head back to the bar 20, huh? We're staying right here. And those kin folks of mine, they don't seem so much. I'll agree with you about the kin folks. I got a hunch this place is worth more than you think. What do you mean, Hoppy? Oh, they're all watching each other, arguing and talking about double crossing. Yeah, and there ain't so much to fight over. Well, if the place is worthless, what are they arguing about? The ranch can't be worth much. Even the account books are gone. Well, I'm going to look into that in the morning. Uh, what might this read? What's the matter? Lost your glasses? Don't tell me you got something else for us to read. All right, bring it over here. We'll read it. Oh, I can read it myself later. <laughs> It was an excited Ruth Baxter who had left the house early in the morning. I had a word.
worried feeling about her safety, I decided to follow the girl. Answer me, are you all right? Yes, help me. I'll be right there. Can you get that rope around your waist? I can make it. You all set? I think so. All right, now put your feet against the side of the wall when I start to pull you. Sure you're not hurt? No, I'm not. That's good. I should have warned you last night. I was afraid something like this would happen. Do you mean somebody deliberately dug this trap to kill me? I certainly do. Just wait till I get back and talk to Matilda. Oh, I wouldn't say anything to her if I were you. But she was the one that told me to come here. She must have known what would happen to me. I'm not sure that she did. But don't take any chances from now on. Somebody's out to make you number two on that list of relatives. I'm afraid so. Hoppy, will you help me? I'll do anything I can for you. After talking things over with Ruth on the way home, I decided it was about time I did some investigating on my own. So, placing California and Lucky as lookouts, something I want to tell him. Why, he, uh, he'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I'll wait for him. I'll go see if I can get him for you. Thanks. Somebody shot him. No! Ralph! Can't do anything more for him. Who killed him? I don't know, ma'am. You did. You didn't like him. What was he doing in your room? He was looking for Hoppy. He said he had something he wanted to tell him. What was it? He wouldn't tell me. I went looking for Hoppy and heard a shot and came back in here and found him like that. Well, these windows and doors are all closed. I can't understand it. I tell you, Hoppy, somebody fired a shot in this room. I'll say somebody fired a shot in this room. You did. One shell is discharged. Sure, I took a shot at a rabbit just before dinner. He killed him. He killed him. I know he did. This looks bad for you, Lucky. I'll vouch for him, Potter. I can't take your word, Mr. Cassidy. I'm going to turn him over to the sheriff. This time, we have the corpus delecti and the murderer. Don't move, anybody. Give me that gun, Lucky. Sorry, Hoppy. These people are trying to frame me. You better let the sheriff straighten this out. He'll straighten out the kinks of a rope. Oh, no, I won't. I'm leaving this room, and nobody's going to stop me. I heard the voices last night. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't bother me. I have a mind to get out of this place. And how we... How are we going to prove that Lucky didn't do the killing, huh? And him running away, and that makes it look worse. Yeah, I know it does, but will you stop blabbing? I'm trying to think. Oh, sure. And where was that chair? Around this way. There. Ralph was sitting here. Cousin Hiram of mine, he was kind of funny, too. Oh, I hate to talk about your relatives, but I think he was crooked. Oh, I think nothing of it. <laughs> he was just a short-tailed relative. <laughs> Can't figure it out. Oh, quit worrying about it and figure this out for me. I still ain't found my glasses. You and your glasses. What'd you say, Hoppy? It's just an old shopping list of Matilda's. Yeah, I thought it was something about onions and potatoes. Yeah. Would you mind telling me what's going on? Not now. Where did you see Potter last? Uh, in the library. Get down and see if he's still there. If he is, tell him I want to talk to him in the master's bedroom. What you want with him? Never mind. When you're sure he's in the room with me, you go out in the patio and see that nobody leaves the house. Well, uh, Hurry up. Come yeah. on. You want to see me? Yes, I think we should have a little talk. Come in. Sit down. In California's interest, I've done some investigating. I've uncovered some things that need explaining. For instance? You've been embezzling money from this estate. You can't prove that. What about the books in the cabinet downstairs? I can satisfactorily explain any entry you've seen. And what about the oil well you're drilling and not letting the heirs in on it? All of this won't save your friend from hanging for the murder of Ralph Baxter. I think it will. Ralph apparently found out something and came to this room to tell me about it. That's why he was killed. Now you're crazy, Cassidy. And the same person that killed Ralph killed Phineas and set a trap for Ruth. Now, either you did it or you had an accomplice. I'm no murderer. Stay where you are. Sit down. What is that chair uncomfortable, Mr. Potter? I know. Just that... Then talk and talk fast. All right, all right. I admit the embezzlement, but as I told you before, I'm no murderer. Then who's your accomplice? You would have killed me upstairs. Okay, who done the shoot? Oh, 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 
Hoppy. It's your deceased cousin, Hiram Baxter. Glad to know you. Hiram! Now I know my father was murdered. You murdered a lot of people, Ruth. Hoppy, I found the missing box hole herd in the West Basin. Never mind about that. I have the prisoner. Where's Mr. Potter? Potter's dead. Hiram Baxter, I thought he was dead. Well, he was supposed to be, but he's very much alive. Yes, but I don't see... I'll give you all the evidence you need to prove that this man murdered Ralph Baxter, Phineas Phipps, and probably his brother Tom. A couple of minutes ago in this passageway, he killed Potter. So he could get the ranch. Exactly. All right, Sheriff. I'll exchange prisoners with you. Hop along, Cassidy. 